On a seemingly routine flight, a seven-year-old boy's cryptic hand gesture perplexed passengers and crew alike. His subtle yet eerie signal caught the attention of a vigilant stewardess whose instincts led her to discreetly dial the emergency number, sparking concern and intrigue among the passengers. As the plane descended towards its destination, airport security braced for a potentially ominous revelation. Tension filled the air as they rushed to the scene, ready for the unexpected. Little did they know that what unfolded next would defy all expectations, plunging everyone into a gripping mystery that would keep hearts pounding and minds racing. There was no one beside him at this point, but a woman was sitting on the seat next to him. That doesn't sound all that strange, but what the boy was doing caught Betty off guard. He made strange gestures with his hands. What's up? Betty's colleague asked her. Betty gasped. Oh, you startled me, she said while smiling. It's nothing. I just zoned out for a second. It's time to give out drinks. Are you coming? Her colleague asked. Betty nodded and followed her to the galley. She asked if they could be the ones handing out drinks in aisle two, which was the one where the boy was sitting. Sadly, two other colleagues had already begun handing out drinks in that aisle so Betty could only observe from a distance. She watched how the woman next to the boy handled the situation. She ordered a glass of wine for herself and an apple juice for the boy, meaning they did belong together. But the feeling something wasn't right didn't seem to fade. It grew more. The boy didn't even dare to look at Betty's colleagues. He just looked out of the window while nervously fidgeting with his hands. He looked scared and almost unsure of the situation. Betty knew she had to do something to help him. They were on a 13-hour flight, so time wasn't an issue, but she had to be discreet about it. She decided to go to the boy as soon as she finished handing out drinks. She made up an excuse in advance, just in case her colleagues would start asking questions. She had to wait until the woman would go to the bathroom again so that she could speak with the boy in private. After an hour of waiting, it was finally time. Betty's heart began to race as she noticed the woman removing her seatbelt. She leaned over to the boy and whispered something to him before she got up and walked over to the bathroom. There was a little line, so Betty had to wait until the woman was actually inside. She quickly grabbed a coloring book and some pencils and waited for the right time. As the woman discreetly slipped into the airplane bathroom, Betty's intuition sprang into action. She gathered her courage, took a deep breath, and approached the young boy as if nothing were amiss. With each step closer, her unease grew as she observed the boy persistently making those cryptic hand gestures. Evidently, he was trying to communicate something, yet the meaning eluded Betty's grasp leaving her intrigued and puzzled. What secret lay behind these enigmatic signals? Betty's encounter was about to unravel a mystery that would captivate the entire cabin and send shockwaves through the flight. As Betty approached, the boy's eyes widened in shock, his gaze darting to the window as if seeking an escape. Undeterred, Betty extended a peace offering a colorful coloring book with a warm smile on her face. Hi there, she began kindly. I have a nice coloring book for you if you'd like. She held it up, hopeful eyes fixed on the boy. Yet, to her surprise, the boy remained unresponsive, his gaze locked on the outside world, as if under a spell of silence. The unfolding mystery seemed to thicken, leaving Betty with more questions than answers and the entire cabin on the edge of their seats. Knowing she didn't have much time, Betty looked at the lavatory. The sign was still red, but it could jump to green any second. She placed the coloring book on the tray in front of the boy and placed the pencils on top. I'm in the back if you need any help with anything. Don't be shy to ask. We're here to help you, she whispered. Suddenly, the light of the lavatory jumped to green and Betty quickly made her way back to the galley. 
She watched as the woman got back to her seat and instantly noticed the coloring books. Confused, she looked around and sat down. She saw how the woman whispered something to the boy and then took away the coloring book. Betty sighed. Her plan had failed. She had hoped to win over the boy's trust with the gift she brought, but the boy didn't even acknowledge her. And why would the woman take away the coloring book? What if the boy changed his mind and later on did want a color? There had to be something else she could do. Betty knew she couldn't do this on her own. She needed a fresh set of eyes to look at the situation and confirm that Betty wasn't seeing things that weren't there. What's going on, Betty? A colleague suddenly asked. It was as if she had read Betty's mind. You seem a bit distracted. Betty sighed. I need to tell you something. Betty couldn't contain the enigma any longer and decided to confide in her colleague, Joanne. She recounted the bizarre signs, the boy's peculiar behavior in the absence of the woman, the fear etched on his face, and even the mysterious disappearance of his coloring book. When Betty concluded her account, Joanne sighed in bewilderment. This all sounds very strange to me, she admitted. Why not confront the woman and seek answers directly? As Betty pondered this suggestion, the puzzle of the boy's behavior and the woman's actions continued to deepen, leaving passengers and crew alike on the edge of their seats, desperate for a resolution to this perplexing in-flight mystery. Betty's eyes fixated on the floor, a realization dawning upon her. She hadn't considered the direct approach. Her mind had raced to detective mode, likely influenced by countless movies during her breaks. But the woman would, of course, deny anything is wrong, Joanne, she confessed, her voice tinged with doubt. Joanne nodded thoughtfully, acknowledging the complexity of the situation. Yeah, you're probably right. As Betty grappled with her next steps, the in-flight mystery hung in the balance, teasing passengers' curiosity and keeping them engaged in the unfolding drama high above the clouds. In a heart-pounding turn of events, the tranquil cabin was shattered by the boy's piercing scream. Betty and Joan swiftly sprang into action, rushing to the scene, their faces etched with concern as they witnessed the boy struggling within the woman's grasp. Let him go, Betty's voice thundered with urgency. The mother turned to Betty, her eyes wide with surprise, attempting to explain the unsettling episode. He's fine, just a little scared of the noise coming from the engine, she insisted, trying to soothe the escalating tension. The mid-air confrontation had taken an unexpected twist, leaving passengers breathless as the true nature of the situation remained cloaked in uncertainty, unraveling a gripping tale of intrigue and emotion above the clouds. Betty's intuition refused to accept the woman's explanation. Her resolve was unshaken. She discreetly retreated to the galley, swiftly dialing the emergency number for the destination airport. With determination in her voice, she instructed them to prepare for immediate action upon landing. There was no chance she would allow the woman to disembark with the boy without further investigation. As the plane descended towards its destination, a new sense of urgency and suspense hung in the air as passengers wondered what would unfold upon arrival. Betty's bold decision had shifted the course of the narrative propelling the in-flight drama into uncharted territory, leaving everyone eager to discover the truth. Betty, with a stewardess's practiced poise, quietly stepped into the galley's narrow confines to update ground authorities. Boy in seat 24A, potentially in trouble, she intoned softly into the phone, ensuring her voice wouldn't carry. She described the boy's light brown hair, green striped shirt, and his companion's wary glances. Her report was thorough, recounting each observed detail to paint a vivid picture for a precise and discreet intervention. Her words were careful, her tone urgent. He's been giving hand signals. Something's not right, Betty reported. Fingers twined, then tapping his leg, almost hidden from view, she continued. 
describing the boy's actions that suggested a depth of fear. She hoped the signals weren't what she feared, but knew they must prepare for every possibility. The line crackled with the gravity of her message. Betty's voice carried the gravity of the situation as she communicated her message with utmost clarity. The burden of responsibility weighed heavily on her shoulders. He's just a child, she emphasized, and his unease has deepened throughout the flight. Betty's words stressed the importance of preparedness, balancing the need for swift action with the necessity to avoid causing public panic. She watched the young boy determined to safeguard him as the plane neared its destination. With tension mounting in the cabin, the stage was set for a high-stakes arrival where the truth would finally emerge, captivating the passengers and crew with an unfolding drama that defied all expectations. Betty's whisper was steady. Anxiety is escalating in the boy's demeanor, she relayed, describing the shift in his body language as the flight progressed. Her covert position allowed her a clear view of the boy while providing live updates. His companion is oblivious or pretending to be, she observed, suggesting an element of danger that needed addressing upon their imminent landing. With a practiced subtlety, Betty kept her updates flowing to the ground team, her phone obscured by a service cart. Assistance must be ready and at the gate. No sirens, no commotion, to avoid alarming him further, she instructed, her concern for the boy's mental state apparent. Each word was measured, and each observation was crucial to ensure the silent alarm she raised would result in a safe and secure resolution. Following her critical call to airport authorities, Betty's vigilance over the boy intensified. Every subtle movement or fleeting glance held the promise of unspoken distress that she couldn't ignore. His occasional, hesitant eye contact hinted at concealed truths, stoking her maternal instincts to protect. Beneath her role's cheerful facade, a shroud of concern enveloped her every action. Amidst the cabin's oblivious buzz, Betty remained the boy's quiet sentinel, her stewardess's smile concealing the worry that gnawed at her. As the flight descended toward its conclusion, the tension soared and the mystery deepened, leaving passengers and crew captivated by the unfolding drama. The disparity between his quietness and the other children's laughter around them was striking a glaring alarm bell to Betty's trained senses. She moved through her duties, all while keeping a covert eye on the silent drama in row 17. Her shift became a balancing act of service and surveillance. Betty observed the boy's every nod and flinch, a silent narrative unfolding before her. He was a puzzle, his pieces hidden in plain sight, each compliant gesture to the woman telling a story of rehearsal and precision. Betty committed every detail to memory, a quiet sentinel amid a sea of travelers. Betty continued to pass the boy's row, offering smiles that fell on deaf ears. His palpable silence stood as a formidable barrier, his isolation a desperate cry for assistance. Meanwhile, the woman's demeanor appeared rehearsed, her smiles too forced, her laughter hollow. The tension aboard the flight was now suffocating, and Betty, gripped by this silent turmoil, felt an irresistible urge to unravel the layers of this meticulously constructed facade. As the plane hurtled towards its destination, a palpable sense of intrigue engulfed the cabin, and passengers found themselves captivated by the unfolding drama anxiously awaiting the revelation that lay just beyond the horizon. As the cabin lights dimmed, Betty's resolve only grew stronger. She carried the burden of suspicion in solitude, her unwavering vigilance unbroken as she attended to the passengers' needs. In the hushed moments between tasks, her gaze remained fixed on the boy, offering a silent assurance of safety. With each cup and napkin she collected, Betty silently renewed her vow to shield him from the unseen threat that seemed to hang in the air. In the embrace of the dimmed cabin, 
passengers found themselves drawn into Betty's silent drama, eager to see how her unwavering determination would play out amidst the shadows of uncertainty. Betty strategically positioned herself as the plane descended, ensuring an unobstructed view of the unfolding events. Her watchful eyes never left the boy who clutched the window shade, his gaze fixated on the approaching ground. Meanwhile, the woman, playing the part of the guardian, adopted a facade of casual indifference, yet her intermittent glances at her watch betrayed an underlying anxiety. Though outwardly composed, Betty had meticulously rehearsed her next course of action in her mind, poised and ready to act the moment the wheels touched down. The tension aboard the flight reached its zenith, passengers and crew alike on the edge of their seats as the final act of this gripping drama loomed large on the horizon. As the journey neared its conclusion, Betty hastened to prepare the cabin for landing, a heightened sense of urgency pervading her every move. Under the pretext of standard procedure, she quietly instructed her colleagues, stay alert and follow my lead. Her fellow crew members nodded in unison, acutely aware of the underlying significance of her words. The atmosphere within the cabin crackled with a potent blend of customary tranquility and an unmistakable readiness for the uncertain events that loomed on the horizon. With hearts pounding and anticipation running high, passengers and crew braced themselves for the final act in this in-flight saga, eager to witness the resolution of the captivating mystery that had held them in suspense throughout the journey. Betty's presence loomed near the boy's row as the plane descended through the clouds. She watched for any change in his or the woman's behavior, ready to intervene at a moment's notice. The other passengers remained oblivious to the undercurrent of tension as the flight attendants exchanged covert glances and positioned themselves strategically around the cabin, poised for the final approach and whatever it might bring. As the aircraft's wheels brushed the runway, Betty's voice cut through the cabin's relief at landing. Please remain seated with your belts fastened. Her tone, though calm, carried an edge that pricked at the passengers' ease, turning their thoughts from the usual rush to disembark to a murmur of speculation. Heads turned, seeking the reason for this deviation from the norm their curiosity piqued by the somber seriousness of her demeanor. With the seatbelt sign illuminated, Betty patrolled the aisle, ensuring compliance. We appreciate your cooperation at this time, she announced, her words smooth but laced with an urgency lost on none. Her practiced calm was both a comfort and a command, masking the swell of apprehension that threatened to surface as the plane slowed to a crawl on the tarmac taxing towards an uncertain welcome. Please stay seated until further notice, Betty reiterated, her firm tone reinforcing the command as the plane turned toward the gate. The usual hustle of retrieving bags from overhead bins was stalled by her authoritative directive, her intent clear but the reason obscured, leaving passengers to exchange worried glances and whispers over the unexpected protocol. As the aircraft eased its final approach at the gate, Betty's unyielding gaze remained locked onto the young boy. Her eyes conveyed a powerful message of resolute protection, promising to shield him from whatever threat lurked. Bound by her unspoken command, passengers remained in their seats, their curiosity piqued by the unfolding quiet drama. Even as the cabin's bustle gradually gave way to hushed anticipation, Betty's attention remained unwavering, a symbol of her steadfast readiness to spring into action the very moment it was required. The atmosphere aboard the flight was charged with expectation as passengers and crew alike prepared to witness the climax of this extraordinary in-flight narrative, eager to discover the truth that had eluded them throughout the journey. With the exit doors sealed, Betty informed the cockpit of the situation her voice a silent streak over the intercom. Authorities will meet us at the gate, she relayed with crisp efficiency. The captain's response was a nod, 
his face reflecting the gravity of her message. Together they reviewed the plan, ensuring a seamless transition from air to ground authority without alarming those on board. The attendants, adept in nonverbal cues, positioned themselves with precision along the cabin's length. They were a human tapestry woven across the aisle, creating a discreet barrier to the exit. Their placement was strategic, allowing them to observe without seeming intrusive, providing reassurance and order as passengers looked on with a growing sense of unease. From the flight deck, the pilot's voice emerged, a calm presence over the intercom. We'll be deplaning shortly, he assured, his message coded for those in the know. His brief glance towards Betty was a silent acknowledgement of their shared secret. The imminent arrival of law enforcement prepared to assess the boy's situation as soon as the cabin door opened. Betty's final briefing to her team was succinct, with a soft yet urgent undertone to her instructions. Be ready to assist on my cue, she said, ensuring everyone understood their roles. The attendants nodded, their faces masks of professional calm, ready to direct the passengers' attention away from the boy and the arriving officers to facilitate a discreet handover. Despite the curious and somewhat frustrated murmur among the passengers, Betty maintained the ordered environment. Her priority was clear. The safety and well-being of the boy overshadowed any temporary discomfort the passengers might experience. She reassured them with a controlled smile. We appreciate your patience, her tone soothing yet firm, a delicate balance between care and command. The cabin was still as passengers waited, a collective breath held in suspense. The tension was palpable, hovering like a cloud of unspoken dread. From first class to economy, travelers felt the stir of a story beneath the surface, the air dense with the unknown. Clasped hands and quieted conversations marked the shared uncertainty as eyes turned towards the front, looking for an answer. Betty moved through the cabin with purpose, her voice calmed in a tempest of whispered concern. We're just taking a few extra precautions today, she informed inquiring passengers with a placating smile. Her assurance was a balm to the fretful passengers, her request for their patience and cooperation a subtle stitch to hold the fabric of calm in place. Murmurs ebbed and flowed through the rows of seats, a low tide of conjecture rising with each minute of delay. The passenger's eyes followed Betty, drawing comfort from her unflappable demeanor, yet feeding on the undercurrents of uncertainty that her guarded movements suggested. Their whispered speculations painted the cabin with shades of concern as the weight extended beyond the norm. Amidst the cabin's growing restlessness, Betty steadied her resolve. She reviewed every possible outcome in her mind, crafting responses to each. Her face was a portrait of composure, but inside, her alertness was sharpened to a fine point. The coming moments could unfold in myriad ways, and she was the linchpin, ready to sway the balance toward safety. As the aircraft docked, a silent alarm seemed to ring through the cabin, charging the atmosphere with anticipation. Passengers peered out windows, stretched in their seats and craned their necks, trying to discern the cause of the delay. Betty stood firm, a sentinel among the rows, her eyes occasionally flicking to the entry where soon the authorities would appear and the storm would break. The aircraft door opened and police officers stepped in with a purpose that rippled through the cabin. Their entrance, assertive and silent, turned every head, a wave of reactions flowing through the aisles. The passengers, already steeped in suspense, now watched the unfolding scene with bated breath. The officers' presence, both reassuring and alarming, marked the moment when uncertainty began to crystallize into reality. The officers moved down the aisle with a clear target. Their steps were measured, their focus unyielding as they approached the boy and his guardian. The cabin's collective gaze followed every movement, 
the air thick with unspoken questions. There was no hesitation in their stride, a testament to the urgency and gravity of the situation that had been conveyed by Betty's quiet calls. As the officers reached the row, the atmosphere grew increasingly tense, casting a spotlight on the woman and the boy, their interaction fraught with tension, observed by dozens of curious eyes. Passengers strained to catch even the faintest snippets of the conversation, their necks craned in anticipation. A distinctive cuff clicked into place, eliciting gasps of astonishment from onlookers. Within the cabin, tension reached its zenith, the situation poised on the precipice of comprehension yet enshrouded in a dense fog of confusion. The collective breath of passengers and crew seemed to hang in the air as the final pieces of the puzzle fell into place, promising to unveil the truth they had long sought throughout the journey. The woman's impassioned protests reverberated throughout the cabin, her voice laced with a mixture of confusion and fear. The crew, led by Betty, exchanged uneasy glances, a subtle thread of doubt weaving through their customary confidence. As the woman's denials clashed with the officer's unwavering resolve, the situation grew increasingly complex. Was this a rescue or a profound misunderstanding? The conflicting narratives painted a convoluted picture that left the crew grappling with the duality of their responsibility and the nuanced layers of the unfolding drama. Amidst the uncertainty and tension that hung in the air, passengers and crew alike found themselves caught in a web of emotions, eager to discern the truth while navigating the intricate shades of gray that defined this remarkable in-flight saga. In a hushed moment of gravity, the boy, his gaze wide and silent, was tenderly guided from his seat by a resolute officer, his small hand enveloped in the comforting embrace of safety. As the woman's protests gradually faded into a distant echo, they moved together toward the exit. The cabin, a silent and reverent witness, bore witness to this poignant tableau a profound intersection of concern and duty unfolding beneath the vigilant eyes of the flight crew and the guardians of the law. With the departure of the boy, the curtain seemed to fall on an extraordinary in-flight saga, leaving passengers and crew alike with a mixture of relief and lingering questions as the aircraft prepared to continue its journey, carrying with it the memory of a dramatic and emotionally charged voyage. In the confines of the airport terminal, the woman flustered yet determined presented her identification. Her voice steadied as she explained the boy's hand signals, each gesture a part of a language developed in therapy. The police officers scrutinized the documents, their expressions shifting from suspicion to consideration. The ID confirmed her relationship with the boy, adding a layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative. As the woman spoke, her narrative began to reshape the officer's understanding. She wasn't the boy's mother, but his aunt, and the distress signals Betty observed were, in fact, therapeutic exercises. The revelation was a twist in the tale that had gripped the entire flight crew. Her words, filled with concern and clarity, began to paint a different picture from what had been presumed. The aunt detailed the boy's fear of flying, an anxiety that gripped him tightly during the flight. He uses these hand gestures to self-soothe, she explained, demonstrating the motions. Her explanation shed light on the boy's behavior, illuminating his actions as coping mechanisms. The officers listened, the pieces of the puzzle fitting together to reveal a story not of danger, but of a child's struggle with fear. The police attentively listened as the woman recounted her nephew's journey with anxiety. She spoke of therapy sessions, of strategies devised to help him navigate overwhelming situations like flying. Her voice carried the weight of responsibility and care, resonating with sincerity. The officer's demeanor softened, understanding dawning as they recognized the nuances of a situation that had initially seemed so clear-cut. The boy, now calmer, spoke in soft, hesitant tones, 
echoing his aunt's explanation. His words were clear and his expression filled with relief as he conveyed his emotions. The police officers, their demeanor transformed from enforcers to empathetic listeners, attentively assessed the evidence from this new perspective. What was once a tense atmosphere fraught with suspicion of danger had now transitioned into a moment of profound empathy and understanding. In this unexpected turn of events, the in-flight drama had taken yet another twist, offering a lesson in the power of communication and compassion, captivating the cabin with its message of unity amidst adversity. Betty stood at a short distance, her heart heavy as the truth gradually unfolded. The realization that her well-intentioned actions had been founded on a misinterpretation struck her with a profound impact. Silently, she acknowledged her error, comprehending the implications of her assumptions. The weight of her mistake hung in the air, serving as a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between cautious intervention and the risk of unwarranted alarm. In this sobering moment, Betty's personal journey through this in-flight drama left a lasting impression, serving as a testament to the complexities of human judgment and the lessons that can be learned from even the most challenging of circumstances. Betty found herself caught in a whirlwind of emotions. Embarrassment at her misjudgment swirled with profound relief for the boy's safety. Her cheeks flushed with the humility of her error, yet her heart lightened, knowing that the child was not in any danger. This moment was bittersweet, a delicate balance between her embarrassment and the solace derived from the knowledge that her intentions, though misguided, had always been rooted in genuine care and concern. In the aftermath of the in-flight drama, Betty's journey of self-reflection continued, serving as a powerful reminder that even well-intentioned actions can lead to unforeseen consequences, but that empathy and compassion can ultimately prevail, making her an even more vigilant and understanding guardian of the skies. In the calm aftermath, Betty embarked on a deep reflection of the recent events. She contemplated the fine line between vigilance and overreaction, recognizing its delicate nature, easily blurred by heartfelt concern. Her role as a stewardess demanded not only care, but discernment, a skill she resolved to sharpen. This uncomfortable experience served as a powerful lesson in the complexities of responsibility and the art of interpreting silent cries for help. Betty emerged from this episode with a renewed commitment to her duty, armed with a deeper understanding of the intricate balance she must strike in the skies, where every decision carries the weight of safety and compassion. Betty felt the weight of her responsibility heavily. Her desire to protect had inadvertently led to a dramatic situation. She acknowledged that compassion, while a guiding force in her duties, also had the potential to cloud judgment. This realization was a poignant one, stirring a deeper understanding of her role and the impact of her actions on those she was entrusted to serve. In the quiet of the emptying cabin, Betty took a moment to absorb the lessons of the day. She committed to balancing her innate concern with a clearer perspective, understanding that her actions no matter how well-intentioned, had consequences. It was a humbling experience, one that would shape her approach in future encounters, blending empathy with a more discerning eye. In a secluded corner of the airport, the boy, now free from the confines of the crowded plane, began to unwind. His aunt, a source of solace, enveloped him in a tender embrace, her words a soothing balm of reassurance. The tension that had once etched his features gradually dissolved, making way for the subtle emergence of a relieved smile. In this tranquil corner of the airport, the residual turbulence of the flight began to fade, replaced by a sense of peace and security as the boy found refuge in the loving embrace of his aunt. Amidst the hustle and bustle of the airport, their bond created a sanctuary where worries melted away and hope took flight. 
With a gracious nod directed towards Betty, the aunt conveyed her appreciation for the stewardess's well-intentioned actions. Her gesture filled with warmth and understanding served as a bridge over the gap created by the earlier misunderstanding. Thank you for looking out for him, she spoke, her voice touched by gratitude. In those simple words of appreciation, any lingering trace of confrontation dissolved into the air, leaving behind a shared sentiment of relief and goodwill. The bond between passenger and crew, once strained, now stood stronger, forged in the crucible of a challenging journey. Betty resumed her duties with a profound sense of purpose. Her presence in the aisles was now guided by the day's events, each step a fusion of her innate compassion and the wisdom she had gained. This challenging experience deepened her understanding of the intricate balance between care and vigilance, reinforcing her dedication to her responsibilities in the skies. As she moved through the cabin, passengers and crew could sense a renewed commitment, and Betty's journey continued, marked by a newfound perspective and a heart strengthened by empathy and experience. In the eyes of those she served, Betty had become not just a flight attendant, but a beacon of hope, reminding them of the humanity that can shine even in the midst of adversity. With the incident behind her, Betty looked forward to her future flights with a refreshed perspective. The lessons of the day were etched in her approach, a balance of concern and discernment now guiding her actions. She understood that each passenger carried their own story, and her role was not just to serve, but to understand and adapt to the myriad human experiences that accompanied them. As the plane taxied for its next voyage, Betty watched from the terminal window. Her gaze was contemplative, reflecting on the journey that had just passed and those yet to come. The aircraft, a symbol of her domain, glided gracefully onto the runway, ready to soar again. Betty, with a wiser, more thoughtful outlook, prepared to step aboard again, her spirit undimmed, her dedication unwavering. 